Hey folks, before we get started today, just a quick reminder that if you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, we'll throw you a shout out on the next episode. It really would mean a lot, and it helps our humble podcast be heard by more listeners like yourself. Also, this episode contains some strong language, so certain ears may not be suitable for listening. Okay, that's it. Let's roll. Hey, stranger. Welcome to the Film Nuts Podcast. I'm your host, Taylor D. Adams. Man, it's been a while since our last episode. You look well. How have you been? Oh, <laughs> I have lost a little weight. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> We've got a great show for you today. Our final act tonight have been singing together since high school. Ladies and gentlemen, the five heartbeats. Come on, let's hear it for them. Hey! So it's rare that we have a guest suggest a movie that I haven't even heard of. And honestly, I feel like an idiot when that happens. But it's also a chance for me to broaden my horizons, and that always excites me. So today we're discussing Robert Townsend's The Five Heartbeats, a musical biopic about the rise and fall of a fictional African-American vocal group beginning in the early 1960s. It's got fantastic musical numbers, deep character development, and a ton of heartfelt moments that really connected with this week's guest, as well as myself. Today we're talking with Kevin Kazi Thomas. He's a hip-hop artist, host, and activist, among many other things. His latest endeavor is a radio show called Inside Voices on WCHL. The aim of the program is to continue the conversation on racism, social justice, and what we can do to better our own communities. It's an extremely insightful show, and I can't recommend it enough. Check out the episode notes for the link. Kazi was kind enough to take time out of his busy schedule to talk with me about his favorite movie, so let's get right to it. Here's Kevin Kazi Thomas singing the praises of the five heartbeats on the Film Nuts podcast. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm great. Glad to be alive. And um, yeah, happy to be here with you, man, for sure. Uh, yeah, it's good to see you again, man. It's it's been a minute. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk with me. Um, so I've been I've been digging your new radio show, Inside Voices. Why don't you uh, tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, um, Inside Voices for those that aren't familiar comes on ninety seven nine The Hill uh, Chapelboro dot com every Sunday at two thirty. Um, and, and it's a show dedicated to just giving a platform for this ongoing conversation that we're having around race, uh, inequality, uh, social justice, um, Black Lives Matter, you know, uh, police brutality. And then what, when we talk about what is systemic uh, about racism and, 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 and the issues that um, go beyond the surface, you know, they're a little deeper, they take some unpacking. And once it, you know, it's a show, you know, not about me, you know, like, like, I know you would say this platform is similar in that way that you, you know, allow people to, to, to speak. And so I want to do the same. I want to have a platform where the authentic people that are invested in these uh, causes and these issues um, have a place to come and, and, and have a real conversation, um, or, you know, from, from honestly, from, from a, whether that be an African-American man or woman, uh, a person of color, uh, uh, someone from the LGBT community, an ally of any race or nationality or religion, mm -hmm. just anyone that's authentically invested in what they're talking about to come on the show and uh, continue this conversation moving forward. Because uh, after the news cameras cut off from you know the, the part of the struggle that's marketable, there's still mm -hmm. a lot. That's when the real work is going to begin. Yeah. Does it? Does it find? Does this change? make itself into law and, and, and real actual change, uh, for the people. So that's what the show is about. Uh, it, it was born, you know, it, it's not much different than the tone that I carried on intelligently ratchet a lot of times, yeah. got into a lot of serious issues. And, uh, and so I think that it, you know, of course, shouts out intelligently ratchet, like this situation was born of my time being there. And, uh, and, and focusing more on the real issues and unpacking them with people. And so now I got my own platform to, to continue that. That's great. Was this something that you approached the radio station to do, or did someone reach out to you and what kind of, I mean, obviously events inspired this kind of program that 
ended up being created, but what specifically, how did the, how did this all come about pretty much? Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the, the synergy of like um, elements coming together, um, was that I, you know, I originally, um, through chamber of commerce, I met the GM of the station there, uh, Aubrey Williams, uh, does a great job over there. That station has been, you know, has won news station of the year in North Carolina several times in the last mm-hmm. few years since she's been there. And so, uh, and, and having a conversation with her about Intelligently Ratchet, um, originally, you know, I was looking for a place for Intelligently Ratchet to have a home. Yeah. Um, I introduced, you know, just talking to her, introduced that concept of the things that we had done. And, uh, and, and then we just, you know, continued to stay in touch, you know, kept a rapport um, as, as things went on. And, um, and so, you know, a period of time goes by, but once quarantine hit and then the death of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, uh, if you're a friend of mine on Facebook, which I know you are, I started, I started speaking my mind, man, I couldn't not say anything. And, 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 and I began really like, you know, not ranting, but just like, speaking from a point of like perspective as as a black male in America and having my own experience and knowledge just to kind of you know blend and say hey this is how I feel about it and uh and posting those and you know and Aubrey being a friend of mine she said hey I see what you're doing here and this voice is what we need in the community and um you know would be good in our community and so I expressed then like hey we you know I would love to continue this conversation in that type of format and so yeah, she was um, open to that. The station has been open to that. Everybody's been great there. You know what I mean? You know, shouts out to Ron as well and and everybody over there at the staff because uh, they've made it very, you know, it's a very supportive environment to talk about some controversial things. I'm talking about Confederate flags. I'm talking about, yeah. you know, blackity blackness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> you know, on, on some of the episodes, just, you know, but not anything anti, you know what I mean? I think it's just more just the reality of situations we're talking about, but mm. for that station to open, open their arms to me up to that format has been great. It's been awesome. That's great. Well, I do appreciate, appreciate you taking the time to, to get with me and talk about a movie. Oh, you're doing a bunch of important oh, man, stuff. Man, you my I'm boy, like... man. We go back, bro. <laughs> Plus, you, yo, you a media, you a media superstar out here, bro. You work hard, man. So <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. that. Respect, man. Yeah, uh, I appreciate that, and I th- I think though, you know, I, I sometimes I trivialize my own podcast where I'm, you know, I talk to people who are doing way more important things and and invite them on to just talk about a movie or a TV show. But I do this is think, cool, though. This yeah, is cool. I need moments like this because it's always go do go do, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm a human. Yeah. I'm gonna talk to one of my homeboys about a movie and how it influenced my life. That's cool. That's a nice portion of my my, my night. I, yeah, I am glad that it, it is a bit of a refresher, but I'm actually looking forward to kind of diving into kind of a deeper meaning for this movie. Cause yeah. when you told me you wanted to watch, um, we were, you were trying to pick what yeah. to do. Um, we landed on the five heartbeats. Yeah. I had never heard of this movie. Oh um, shit. And okay. I was like, I was like, okay, cool. So I looked it up and mm-hmm. I recognized uh, some of the names attached to it. And I was like, huh, sure. why haven't, why haven't I heard of this movie? Um, so I was looking forward to watching it and I watched it. I really dug it. Um, but we're not here for me. I want you to tell me why it's your favorite movie or why you wanted to specifically talk about the five heartbeats. Oh man. Five heartbeats, uh, to me, uh, it's a couple of different things. First of all, it's in a, just entertaining. I, I get a real, like, you know, nostalgic feeling, of what it you know could have possibly been like to be a temptation mm-hmm. or or top or you know what yeah, I mean yeah. Any of that Motown type of you know era uh, groups to what it could have been like to be in that type of environment you know and 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 you see that you know but uh, beyond just being entertaining and and the story you know like and everything like that um, it speaks to me like my aspirations of you know, of of what I always have been chasing or in the sense of aspiring and working on in music. And it is like, to me, like, uh, it, it just kind of shows you all levels of the game, right? It's, I'm, I, I think that the, how the music business really can be, 
mm-hmm. how cutthroat it really can be, how elements of things come together, how groups break up, how money and power and greed and things like that come between family and and and, and all of those themes that like I low key have either experienced or witnessed like in the pursuit of, you know, re- you know my own record deals and situations and things like that. Yeah. And so like it's just like it's almost like, you know, you're reading this parable. It's a precautionary tale. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Say anybody, you know, you think it's like, haha, this is a joke. But nah, Five Heartbeats is a precautionary tale, like about what it is to like be in the music business of how grimy it can get, yeah. how cutthroat it can get, how it can turn your own family against you, how money, like that part of it, um, I think is invaluable. And I always appreciate it because there's not many, anytime that I feel like art gives you a nod to something that is uh, a universal law that's not written down anywhere, yeah. I appreciate it. And it's, it's like Q-tip saying industry rule number 4,080, record company <laughs> people are shady. He's just letting it know, hey y'all, I'm just letting you know, any aspiring artist, heads up. And, and the movie is, is a huge heads up. And then outside of that, I see parts of myself in each character. Ah. I'm definitely a little bit choir boy. I grew mm-hmm. up, uh, you know, and, and my father was a deacon and I was in church every Sunday. I was a, a, a usher and I, I did the collection plate and all things. Too. Yeah, I did all of that, like <laughs> coming up in high school, you know, yeah. and so like that part of me being a good boy and, you know, don't you do this and don't do that is part of how I was definitely brought up and raised. Um, you know what I mean? And then also being the, just like choir boy being like, as soon as I get out here in these streets, yeah. I'm going crazy um, to pursue what it is that I really want to do and love. Um, there's parts of me that are duck that mm-hmm. are, you know, a little bit introverted when it comes to like, what I write and and what I aspire to to do with songwriting and 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 producing and things like that, but that is RZA minded, right? Like that, mm-hmm. I can take the combination of elements of artists that I work with or people that you know that I collaborate with and can make something bigger than myself. I get that from from Duck's character, and then you know, uh, and then his brother. You know what I'm saying to his character, like. Cause you know, there's a part of me that that has always had this like thing for the ladies, you know, <laughs> so, just dead ass like that being part of just like you know, but understanding how that can be a detriment, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once again, being a precautionary tale that it caused him to ruin a relationship with with his brother, mm-hmm. and uh, that took years to put back together, of course. Um, and then there's dresser. I love the dance, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I love yeah. Dance. And that part of just like, ooh, that you know, being able to move and and what that music does to you. Mm-hmm. And of course, I think Eddie Kane Jr.'s tale is the closest to my heart. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's like this, like uh there's a there's been at times where there's been parts of myself that I felt uh self-defeating or like I'm in my own way. Mm-hmm. I have this talent that man if I you know if I only could realize it uh and get out of my own way and not be a, a detriment to myself that you know you actually you know could be bigger than anything you know and Eddie was super talented man just mm-hmm. could not get out of his own way like was his own worst enemy and uh you know the, the, that character I think you know, your, your people that are like, you know, your with homie that was in uh, Oasis, the the one, the brothers, Liam and Noel, right? Mm-hmm. They were too talented for them. Good, too talented. <laughs> they hated each other. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's that type of thing. It's just like, yo, it all spoke to me um, at, in my aspirations of, you know, uh, like I said, in music and chasing this whole music dream, for sure. I can see through your job. Eddie, you got it all wrong, man. Stealing my moves. My style, nigga, even trying to riff like me. Hey, man, why don't you get your boy out of here and detox him? You want my spot, Flash? Hmm? Slum dwelling, scum sucking, slug ass motherfucker. <laughs> you want my spot, Flash? Huh? Well, you ain't gonna get it, because you ain't got it. 
you know, I, I assume if this movie has meant a lot to you, you've seen it more than once. Uh, do you remember, <laughs> <laughs> do you remember how and when was the first time that you did see this movie? Oh man. I want to say the first time I saw this movie. Did we go see this? I don't think I saw. Okay. You know, when I think the first time I saw this movie was, hmm. and this is a throwback uh, back when <clears throat> You would be in these uh, VHS BMG clubs, like where you'd order mail order. You'd have like eight VHS come to your house in the mail, like every huh. month. You'd be in okay. this club, yeah, and they would send you like VHS movies. And so, mm -hmm. uh, my dad was in this club, and so we'd get like, you know, buy one movie, get eight free every month, or five free, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so my dad bought one, and he was like, "What you want to get, Kevin?" I was like, "Oh, five heartbeats." So. I knew I hadn't seen it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I scratched that off and my dad uh, ordered it and I, I just watched it, man. I remember I cried at the end. Like I was <laughs> self admitted. I like I went into it expecting to not to like think it was cheesy and not like it. Yeah. And just came out of it with like, wow, this is dope. And then like even my, you know, my wife is sort of like it's like we have this baby doll thing, you know, where it's like we've known <laughs> each other a long time, you yeah. know, and we've gone through our shit and we're still together. And so like even that element of it is crazy because, you know, it, it's wild how many parallels, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think th that I see in, in, in the movie, man. Yeah. Well, going through that catalog, deciding that you wanted to watch it, what what inspired you to want to watch it? Like, had you seen a trailer and you dug it or you just saw like the poster or something and you thought it was cool? I, I, uh, I always like have been one to know like my history or study my research. If there's a James Brown movie, I'm watching it. If there's a Jimi Hendrix movie, I'm watching it, a documentary. Mm -hmm. um, um, I couldn't wait. I've, I've watched Cadillac records so many times because of my affinity to know about little Walter and, 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 and muddy waters. Mm -hmm. and you know what I mean? I just yeah. to know about them. I've watched that movie so many times. And, you know, so when I saw that at that time, there wasn't a temptations movie yet. Yeah. So that's, you know, if in the timeline of great, you know, of this, like, you know, timeline of black B movies, there mm -hmm. was not yet a temptations movie there. Yeah. So when five heartbeats came out, I was like, these characters are based around these temptations. Uh, Eddie Kane's Eddie Ruffin, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. David Ruffin, you know, yeah. like you could, you could tell that the five heartbeats were the temptations. And so I was like, all right, this is like the unofficial temptation story. This is how it probably went. And this is like, and so in wanting to know more about that Motown, I crammed to understand that Smokey and, and Holland, Dozier Holland era and, and everything that went on around Motown. So like, I was like, let me just, check this out because it looks like it's a good story about that Motown era. Mm -hmm. That's that kind of what I was expecting was just a, a Motown era movie. I gotcha. And got, when got you did lot. when you did first watch it, what mm -hmm. about it kind of like appealed to you like when you were watching it? Uh the the just the realness of it okay. too because like it's it's just like I don't know the way that uh the characters interact and, mm -hmm. and to each other. It's just a lot of like, you know, the real, the realness that goes on. Like I've been duck trying to talk to a girl that was probably out of my league and got played. And I remember trying to get her to like me and do that. Like I've seen, I've been in that situation. Mm -hmm. I've been in that situation where I felt like I've had a baby on the way. And then it's like, I need somebody to talk to. And then there's like, there's just so many parts of that movie where it's just like, you know, the characters, I, I think, spoke to me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think that, you know, at, at different moments in the movie, different characters, I see I see parts of myself. Um, and, and, and at a time where I wasn't always so confident, you look for cues in people that are strong or things that, you know, can you can grasp like, yeah, man, like, you know, like, I can make it if I believe in myself and continue, you know, it's just little, yeah. little cues like that, yeah that I got from there. So kind of pivoting a little bit, but within the same kind of uh, subject of this movie affecting you. Um, mm -hmm. So you've talked about connections to different characters. You've seen parallels and stuff like that. Is there, how is this movie kind of maybe inspired 
you, whether it's been as an artist or a professional or as a person? Yeah, uh, to see everything through to the end, to the, that, you know, I feel like coming from where I've come from, even from the beginning, like me pursuing this was far fetched in, in a lot of ways in, in the media sense of with, you know, what I've been doing with, you know, we started out going Facebook live on my couch. Mm-hmm. I got a radio show. You know what I mean? You're talking about Intelligent or Ratchet. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Or, yeah. Sorry. And then even with the music to be coming from, you know, uh, just, I came up freestyle and battle rapping in Chapel Hill, man. And, and to been able to just do some of the things I've been blessed to do and, and, and working on, um, you know, it's, it's inspired me to just say like, Hey, that there is like a career in, you know, songwriting, producing and, and pursuing and chasing your dreams and like the kind of like determination it takes. It doesn't mean like, cause I think sometimes so many times, and this is another way it inspired me. She, oh, I'm sorry. Stuff hits the fan. A lot, <laughs> you, right? you, can, you can curse. You're fine. <laughs> okay. Shit hits the fan a lot in, yeah. in, in life. Right. And then, you know, you in production and media and, and music and whatever it is we're doing, like shit hits the fan a lot. And I think when you early on, some people take that as a determined, like I'm not meant to do this or like, this mm-hmm. is a sign that like, I need to go do something else. It didn't work out. I used to do that, but it didn't work out for me. Right. And literally, you know, like I know it was just like, nah, I messed up that time. I just didn't quit. I went back and tried to do it better the next time. Literally, you know, and, and, and just being determined and determined because when you're in this music thing and before, you know, before people gave me respect as being Kazi, it wasn't always this way. I've been laughed at. I've had my CD thrown in the trash in front of me in my face. You know, I, I you know, I've been booed. I've been like mm-hmm. lost mic battles, been humiliated. Like there's been plenty of scenarios that were a whole lot less self-confident. Right. Mm-hmm. And so to, to see a movie like this, where it's like, yeah, the five heartbeats started out singing in the, the Harlem Duke on the Chitlin circuit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In these little hole in the wall clubs, but it's the the vision that like, nah, one day we're going to be multi-platinum. We're going to get here for long as we stick it out, stick to the grind and, 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 and stay true to what we believe in, stick together that, that we can make it. And so that part of it inspired like, okay, anytime, you know, it's just like, yo, the obstacles are the way shit's going to happen. Yeah. Shit, shit happening is you being on schedule. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. especially when you're like, you're trying to like elevate and do something like bigger than yourself. Come on, duck, do the steps. No, it's, it's my music. Do you have any specific memories surrounding watching this movie? Like whether it was the first time you watched it, like you got it in the mail or whether you showed like this movie to like your wife or something like that. Yeah. Oh man. I'm trying to think. I mean, it's just a movie I bond over with people. Like if they tell me that it's their jam or they've seen it and we ought to automatically go into (laughs) <laughs> like trading lines with people from yeah. the movie or whatever like that you know you want my spot flash hmm? like i just, <laughs> like i just go into that when people oh you like fire oh you fire me yeah like we just automatically start start trading lines and so 
there's just been time. I'll say this. There have been several times and moments where me and my boy Billy have gone through half of the damn movie, just going back and forth, <laughs> just like trying to like catch each other. You know what I mean? With different lines yeah. or whatever. And we've just gone on and on and on. And like, cause you, when you know the movie by heart, it's like, when do you stop? <laughs> Sometimes. But that's, that's just like, I guess, OD, that's just too much, you know, that's, but that's how, you know, how I think many times I've seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think how much that it's kind of subliminally low key impacted me is just like, you know, like I said, it in, in so many ways, it, sp it speaks to me, you know, and, you. That, and that, that, that the ending is happy for yeah. Eddie and for the, for the, for them in general, that they have each other and that they have family and mm -hmm. what matters, right. What, what, what really mattered in the end was them being able to be together and share, share those memories. And that's a message as well, man, you know? Yeah. And, and about music, you know, and, and like had the feeling and, and why it matters and, you know, just a great, a great, Dave, you know, Robert Townsend. My yeah. Man. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I got a little, I got a little choked up during that last church scene. I was like, that was the one I was like, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen. I hadn't seen the movie. Mm -hmm. Eddie shows up. I was like, oh, of course. <laughs> right, right in the heartstrings. Yeah, in choir boys church. <laughs> I know. He came back and donated money. See, it's like the redemption. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he had to go his path. It didn't mean, you know, he left God. He came back. Like, it's just so many elements that speak to me. Like, you know, that came back to do the right thing and then like that that led to eddie redeeming himself and that yeah. the one that he really loved was there for that redemption she stood by him through all of his wild shit mm -hmm. like it is is very impactful <laughs> Ghostface and Raekwon squ squashing their beef after they try to kill each other for you know half of their teenage life. Like it, it's it's stories like those that, like you say, pull at the heartstrings. That part and when they get back together at the cookout and he says, "You sure yeah. you want to hang with old Eddie Kane?" Oh man, the first time I saw that, that shit be like, "Yo, man, <laughs> just y'all get up there and dance together, man!" Like. <laughs> Dude, no, like I got that snotty, like right, yeah. snotty little kid cry, like when he said, "You sure y'all want to hang?" I was like, "Yeah, man, y'all all still cool, man. You didn't mean to get the manager killed. Well, yeah, you did, <laughs> but we forgive you." <laughs> they want to watch that. It's okay. That's junk. That's not music. I can't have them listening to that stuff. Well, why don't you show them what real music is? You ain't said nothing like, but a word. Oh. Heartbeats, front oh, and center. Eddie. Sure y'all want to hang with old Eddie Kane? We're sure. What you waiting on, Doc? I ain't sang in years. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Fall in line, girl scout. You don't need me. I know that. You're always the worst dance anyway. <laughs> yeah, that too, that won't be. I'm 
wasn't the worst dancer. The choir boy was. <laughs> so when I watched this the other day, um, the thing that I rented it off iTunes or something, and the thing that came up right afterward was, hey, you should watch the documentary Making the Five Heartbeats. What? So I was going to ask you, have you seen it? No. Okay. It came out two years ago. Robert Townsend just like quick. He it almost looks like he just quickly put it together, um, but in a good way. Like he wrote and directed. He voices he voices it over. But and they have uh, interviews with uh, Keenan Ivory Wayans and um, Leon and just pretty much everybody they played a main character. Um, sure. So you should watch it. I'm <laughs> on that. I might I, I might get watched tonight. Four, four dollars on iTunes. That's all it costs to rent. Uh, <laughs> And one of the things that it's insightful because it goes through the whole process of like from the, the um, inception of the idea to the execution and it's like the aftermath and everything. Um, but one of the, not to spoil it, but a couple of things that were brought up that I thought were kind of interesting were um, the fact that um, when they first, when Robert Townsend and Keenan Ivory Wayans uh, landed on a version of the script they liked, um, they sent it to some executives that they had a good relationship with and they liked it. Uh, but then two days later they came back and said, we're not sure there's an audience for it. And wow. you know, we, and, and I think they started, they started with it. I want to say maybe like 86, 87. Um, so a couple of years before it came out, but obviously making a movie takes a while. Um, so that was always interesting to me because you look back at these movies that, end up being uh that mean a lot to us sure and if you go back and look and say oh somebody thought there was no audience for this movie like are you crazy to me yeah for sure and and this has this is actually kind of similar to i did it we did an episode on the shawshank redemption where it's not a not a question of audience but when it came out as with this movie it didn't really do much in the box office but everybody watched it when it got on home video and vhs Um, I I would say that's in my top 10 of all time as well, man. Yeah. And it's, what do you, in this day and age, can you imagine there's not an audience for anything? Like, is there such a thing as there isn't an audience for this? I don't think that that's true anymore. I think that that's just part of like perspective of what we're talking about. That's been a problem across what we've been to the the broader conversation Mm -hmm. of perspective of, who's making those decisions is that, you know, rich, white, Caucasian Hollywood that's mm-hmm. saying that these stories, who's gonna really go watch a story about, you know, five black dudes singing soul music? Like who cares about that? Not understanding the cultural relevancy of why it would matter to someone like me or mm-hmm. yourself or anyone that, that loves the movie for what it, all the reasons that we've been talking about, you know, but I think that um, who's been, you know, people making those decisions um, as what we're talking about, the diversity or lack thereof of what people have been talking about in the Hollywood and the Oscars and things like that. Of Mm -hmm. Like we have to be able to tell black stories and the diversity of stories of all different types of people. But we had, that's why it's important, right. Is because what, someone will be totally missing why a story like this is so important. And um, if their game is money, which I know they care a lot about, yeah. um, it, it pays to tell these stories. So how many years did it, you know, and, that, and this is back to like the relevancy, right? Because how many years, and I'm sure that they say that a black male led superhero movie is pointless or wouldn't, mm-hmm be relevant, right? Who's going to go see what black superhero is going to ring at the box office? Mm -hmm. Here comes Black Panther, billions of dollars, you know, revenue generated, right? And it's Mm -hmm. like, I didn't see that movie until my 40s. My son, you know, I I grew up thinking that there would never be a black superhero lead outside of like Blade, you Mm -hmm. know? Falcon just kind of flies around and shoots Uzis with Captain America. That's a whole nother convo, right? But... (laughs) Um, but I never thought that I would see a black male superhero lead. And my son has already seen that. He's nine. He's already seen that. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that I'd ever see a black president. I, I didn't see that till later in my life. My son's nine. Already seen that, mm-hmm. right? And I'm talking about why these things matter. 
you know, and they do, man, you know, to, to, to like someone, somebody's painting their, their framework of what's possible, of, of the reality of what's possible and what's attainable and achievable uh, to, to have these things to look at and grasp and point and say, Hey, these things look like me, you know, and, and, and are, from, you know, Hey, that's where I'm from, or, you know, represents my, you know, my energy that's important. I mean, and so for a movie producer that they, they, they would totally be missing, they would ho- totally miss that just thinking dollars and cents, yeah. not thinking of like the cultural relevance and the importance of young black artists or young artists that aspire that to to touch that the in a little bit of essence of what that Motown or the soul or what the grind of making it in the music business might be like mm-hmm. to that this movie hat would speak to them. So that's why it's important that we tell our, you know, people make their own movies and Robert Townsend, it, it's not surprising. Look at the two people that got it done. Robert Townsend, Keenan Ivy Way and yeah. two people to, to, um, you know, black males in Hollywood that make things happen, you know, uh, that, got that, um, you know, to earn that right and authority to put out their own movies and films and things like that. And so, you know, it speaks to me on that level as well. Mm-hmm. You can't get casted for that story. You tell that story yourself. Yeah, 100%. Right on. Uh, throughout the entire ma- like production of the show, the producers or executives keep, they, they want to make sure it's under budget. So, you know, they don't waste too much money. And one of the scenes they kept wanting to cut was the scene with duck and his little sister in the bedroom. Okay. They like kept wanting to cut it, kept wanting to cut it, kept wanting to cut it. And I was learning this. I was like, that was one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie. And it come, they come to uh, a final round of edits and they're like, look, we'll present this in front of a test audience. If they don't like it, we have to cut it. And Robert Townsend's like, okay. Okay. And so they, they screen it and that, that scene and the church scene tested through the roof. Right on. And I was like, it's so mind boggling. Cause like I said, that was one of my favorite scenes throughout this whole movie right. because it was like, it was just pure joy inside of like two and a half, three minutes. Seth, I'm trying to clean up this room. I'm trying to write a song. All right. But if this room is not clean by the time mom and daddy get home, somebody's going to be in big trouble. If this song isn't written by Saturday, I'm going to be in trouble. Now, I don't see what's so hard. All you got to do is combine this part with this part. Right on. And even how, how you, you know, the, that moment right there, they're like that part of it, there's, there's different parts of it that people will break out in song, you know, yeah. and, you know, where we are in, in the house and who's around and, mm-hmm. and what, what, what state of drink we are on. You know? <laughs> um, when it gets to that part, it hits just different. It hits yeah. no matter how hard it get like, there's something about that joint right there that yeah. just like, and then even how like, it just reminds, you know, if you have sisters, if you got, you know, I'm a, I'm a younger brother, I got an older sister, mm-hmm. but <laughs> even how she's like, no, I'm not stopping. Like yeah. he tried to stop her <laughs> several times and then she's like, nah, it's my song now. And I'm like, that's brother, sister shit. Like that's, that's real, you know? And mm-hmm. uh, so, but yeah, I love that part. I can't imagine that part not being in the movie. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, what was, what was your favorite scene? Oh man. Let's see. I got a couple favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely the end, like I said, the sure you want to hang with old Eddie Kane. I just feel like that is like a release. It's like yeah. a release to the whole tension that builds for Eddie's. Does you realize you're a shithead Eddie? Did you ever come to terms with like, like what you've done? And like, you know, or just like kind of like opportunities that you ruined and like things like that. And that moment let me know that he came to terms with like, you know, outside of being in church, but that nah, it wasn't for show. Like, nah, yeah. like he is kind of like hit rock bottom and had that conversation with God and whoever else he's needed to have that with. And that kind of was a very redemptive moment. So I love that moment of the movie. Um, I also love 
Uh, there's a there's a couple. So let's see, there's the parts of me that speak to the angel on my shoulder, mm -hmm. and then there's moments in the movie that speak to the devil on okay. my shoulder, right? So there's the parts of me that speak to the 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 angel on my shoulder uh, <laughs> are are definitely like when they first time they hear the song on the radio. Yeah. Um, you know him. You know them when they go to get the Cadillacs and like, I mean, what color yeah. do you want? You know. Like, <laughs> I, I love that part. Um, you know, I, I love that uh, when they go and they do uh, the talent show at the Apollo, they did mm -hmm. the show the, and uh, the girls are there trying to boo them and get them eliminated. Yeah. Eddie flips it on her and makes her melt in her seat. I love that part. I love it when they run shy brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I got to fight every night to prove my love. <laughs> like... I love that part, you know, run shy brother. You know how many times we've been somewhere and been like, yo man, run shy brother, run shy brother. <laughs> Come on, we gonna run shy brother. That's my baby brother over there. Yeah, it's kind of cute. Kind of having a bad time tonight, because I have to babysit. Can't dance, don't know how to talk to women. It's a virgin. Look at that dumb little look on his face. Now that you mentioned it, he does look stupid. <laughs> so why don't we get out of here? Let's go do something. Anything. Yeah, you're reading my mind, babe. Work it, JT. Work it! Like, you know, just little more parts like the other movie that work they sell well self into your life, um, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, and then there's, there's, you know, there's parts of me that, like, dramatic uh for dramatic effect uh yeah. when eddie goes to his dad and, and his dad is like he ain't gonna be shit neither that part is cold man. yeah he ain't gonna be shit neither like oh my god he ain't gonna be shit because i ain't shit and i'm like damn now it's even a deeper level like because yeah. you feel worthless now he and it just was like oh man so then that let me know right away like kind of where Eddie's issues are stemming from. Like, mm -hmm. they, you know, his father's obviously had issues and he grew up in a home where that energy was put on him and to, that he would never amount to anything. Yeah. And uh, so you, I, that that's crazy. You know, I think it's just something that if you pick, I like good characters, man, and good writing, complex simplicity. Mm -hmm. And just from that one interaction, it told me a lot about, okay, Eddie, Eddie's, what you know what he's up against is all here and then here yeah just that one interaction so i love that moment um i love just the <laughs> the part where eddie and them are in there doing cocaine and this girl comes in there i just can't do this anymore <laughs> hey, eddie man you ain't got your girl in check <laughs> yeah <laughs> baby dog i think you're gonna step in your bounds just a little bit like that was the start of the fall though I was the beginning, the yep. beginning of the end, man. That part, um, uh, <laughs> my office hours are from nine, nine to five. five. Oh my god! When oh man, <laughs> you want you want your spot flash? Hmm? You want your spot flash? Hmm? Like that part, and then the sad part that I laugh at that I, I feel wrong for laughing at it, but whenever they come back around on tour and. Eddie is cracked out and he shows back oh, up and yeah. he's like, hey, fellas, I'm ready, man. Look. Yeah. Dang. He's got the old sequin <laughs> vest and the, shit on. The last outfit he wore from like the last tour from like eight years ago. Yeah. And so like I, I, I feel bad and then I like, but I laugh at that moment because he he delivers that so well of mm -hmm. like, damn, Eddie, like this is where you at right now. Like you, you, you like on that crackhead level and you were like the biggest star in music and and let let that shit ruin you check, check it out Dang. <laughs> Look, remember? Huh. nice like this i wish raindrops would fall Night like this, I wish raindrops would fall. Night like this, I wish raindrops would fall. <laughs> Eddie, 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 Eddie.
I love I love the dance off too between Dresser and uh Sarge. Yes, and yeah. Sarge. And 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 if uh uh Sarge is one of the brothers that danced at the Cotton Club. The uh Nicholas brothers. Nicholas brothers, yes. Sarge is one of the Nicholas brothers, and so like uh respect respect to Sarge when he when he first bust that out. I was like, who the whatever? And my brother was like, that's one of the Nicholas brothers, right? I got somebody I want you to meet. Sergeant Ernest Johnson, one of my oldest and finest buddies from the army. He's here to help us with the choreography. What you talking about, Jim? I do the choreography, man. Uh, dresser, he's not here to take your place, man. He's here to just help out. What can he teach me? Uh. Man, if you didn't like what I was doing, you could have come and talked to me. Instead of going behind my back, bringing in some old drunk... Stop the right there. Now, don't let your mouth get you into something your ass can't get you out of. Anyway, let me see your best combination. Huh? Huh, my ass. Let me see your best combination. Sure, yeah. dresser. Which then made me go research, and then that was led me to the stormy weather. Yeah the best dance scene ever put on film outside of thriller <laughs> yeah you no know? and i showed my son that i i when the first time i saw them do those splits down the steps like so that's how one thing kind of led me to the other um, mm -hmm. of being you know up on that but yeah that scene dress it to show them your best combination dress up me and my cousin have said that a hundred times we've been in the club like <laughs> show them your best combination show them your best combination like just pop culture moments that, you know, so many quotables in there that have, like I said, worked its way into my life. Man. At that point in time, wasn't no Tyler Perry's and Oprah's doing like things that big and Ava DuVernay's and and uh, Ryan Coogler and, you know, a lot of the great people that have, you know, emerged, you know, in the last 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. Um, Robert Townsend did Hollywood Shuffle. Yep. And then he turned around and, and did this movie. And I was like, oh, this is, you got a budget for this. Like, this is a real production. So I was impressed by that part of it, that a black man had that production level and capability at that at that moment in time. I was okay. cognizant of that, you know, because I pay attention mm -hmm. to, to the, I've always aspired to be that kind of Bo Jackson type of, I can do both, you know, movie and film, because I see the, there's like an evolution of progression from artists and rap especially, you know, and you being an MC and, and, and moving in, in hip hop mm -hmm. to that being longevity, Latifah, Will, Cube, uh, you know, uh, LL, Busta Ron, you know, there's just so many, you know, rappers that turned actor that have gone on, you know, Pac, you know, you could go on and on, DMX, there's some really good actors. Yeah. And, uh, and so I always saw that as like, you know, a thing. <laughs> yeah, like that was that was the thing that you noticed that you were most impressed by that kind of like stood out to you as far as like culturally yeah like okay. right i was like damn robert townsend's oh shit this is bad this is <laughs> what's up we oh Rob, they let him do this like he got money to do this okay like this is gonna change some things and i really feel like new line cinema like because coming up around that time, right after that, New Line Cinema was like, nah, we putting out all the black movies. Boys mm -hmm. in the Hood, Menace, um, anything that was like like that, New Line Cinema was doing all that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they saw the benefit in like a Five Heartbeats and some of the things that Spike Lee was doing independently and were like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna jump on this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been great, man. I really appreciate you talking with me about this movie. Um, real quick before we go, you've you've got some new music coming out. Is that right? Yes, I uh, got new music coming out. Everybody, stay tuned for that. Um, you know, I'm excited. Fifteen got about fifteen new joints. Um, a lot, a, a little different than I would. I think some people will expect for some of it. Um, I just, you know, really want to touch all of the influences that. I have in music. Um, mm -hmm. so like being being um able to sit in the house and focus long enough to create something that I feel like is like 
a good representation of where I am now. So yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, I don't want to give away too much details of it, but yeah, <laughs> everybody follow me. It's coming soon. It's it's okay. done. We're getting mixed. I like, but I, you know, I just don't have the proper information at this moment. Okay. But yeah, the new album is coming very very soon. I'm excited about it. Awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to hear it. You know, I just want to say, you know, thanks again, man, and um. What just always know we always gonna pick up wherever we leave off at, bro. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, no, um, I dig it. Yeah, like I, I dig what you do, bro. We got good energy, so just you know, any, anytime you need anything from me, let me know, bro. Yeah, man, I really appreciate it. Take care, stay safe. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Same, brother. All right, All right. see you, bud. Peace, man. Musical biopics have a tendency to all tell a similar story, and that's just the nature of the beast. But what The Five Heartbeats does effectively is examine the individual obstacles and motivations of every one of the five protagonists, and it does so with style and substance. Thank you all so much for listening this week. Kazi and I had a great time talking about this movie. If you liked what you heard, please go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our episodes. And if you leave us a rating and review, we'll throw you a shout out on the next episode. And you can get in touch with us on Twitter at Film Nuts Podcast or shoot an email to hello at filmnutspodcast.com. I wish I could have put all the songs from this movie in this episode, but then I probably would have run into some kind of copyright issue. So instead, please enjoy Kazi's latest single, wake up that's it for this week thanks again for listening and have a great day they shot aubrey on a jaw brianna she was sleeping philando had a permit and he wasn't even reaching baby and his lady in his car while he was leaking no surprise i watched it all on facebook live see what they do to us when no one's looking ain't a mystery but you would never know because you ain't taught about our history oh now these phones got you seeing it clear man that knee been on our neck for like 400 years and the pain and the rage come from hundreds of cries every time a black mother had to bury their child trayvon was walking home tamir was in the park botham was in his living room they shot him in the dark they do dirt cover it never see the slammer so rp to everyone who died off camera my own people killing us now cops is too now tell me what the fuck am i supposed to do come on black people out in the streets time to wake up allies down for the cause time to wake up every race color and culture you better wake up uh, and work together ain't no stopping the snap come on black men killing each other time to wake up